thing is adding yet another scene and an image to an existing scene. So last time we were here, um, we added an image to our splash scene and it now waits for three seconds and then it pops over to title scene. So what we'd like to do is add the title scene now and then have it move over to our next scene, which is called menu scene. So to do that, we will first add in our new menu scene and copy our existing title scene code over to it before we change anything. So go here and add in our menu scene.javascript. And what we will do is we'll go to our title scene code and just copy everything like we did last time and paste it over. So now menu scene is going to hold be basically our blank template. So inside menu scene, we'll have to change all the instances that refer to title scene to menu scene. So our comment should refer to menu scene and our class definition should now refer to menu scene. And our key should be menu scene. The background color we can just leave as white. In the console, when we spit out what scene we're in, we should update that so we know we're in menu scene. And we need to export the default of our class back to menu scene. Okay, so adding the new scene in and just running it, nothing should change. Our program should still run. It does, okay. The next thing we need to do because we've added a scene is update game.js and add in all the lines that refer to a new scene. So we'll just copy and paste each one and then update it. So we need to import our new menu scene class and it can be found in our file called menu scene.js. We need to create a variable. It's going to hold a menu scene and it's an instance of our class called menu scene. We need to create a variable that will hold. I'm sorry, we've already created the variable. Now we need to add that to our list of games or our list of scenes that game scene can keep track of. So the key was called menu scene. And that should be it. So once again, we should be able to rerun our program. Nothing should change still because we haven't added a reference or anything to it. Well, we've got a reference, but we're not calling it. So our program still runs and we're good to go. So like we added an image to splash scene, we're now going to go to title scene and we're going to do the same kind of thing. We're going to add in our new image. So we're going to scroll to the very top of title scene. And like we did last time, under our constructor, under super, what we're going to do is create a new variable. I'm actually going to copy and paste this so that I don't mess it up, so that we spell it perfectly. Okay, and I'm going to call my variable title scheme scene background image. Once we have a placeholder for that image or for the, that the image is going to hold in a variable, then we can go to preload and we can load that image into memory. So the image we're going to be using this time is called alien screen image JPEG and it exists over here in our assets. Let me expand this. I have two versions. And we're going to focus on this one today. Okay, so it's that image right there that we're going to be loading in. So now that we have it in our title scene and we have it loaded in preload, 
then we can load it and show it up on our screen. Just like last time, we're going to load the image up and stick it in the middle of our scene. Okay, so same kind of code that we wrote last time. The XY coordinate is the corner of my image and I'm changing it to show up in the very middle of the scene for me. Okay, so that should stick it in the middle and we should be good to go. I'm just going to delete one little thing at the back here and then we'll explain what that is in a moment. Okay, so now that we have it loaded, it should actually show up in the middle of the screen for us. So let's see if that's working properly. So there we go. There's our image, but it's kind of small. So what we would like is to increase the size of it. And that was that little piece that I deleted off the back. You can actually set the scale once you have the image loaded from preload. When you create it, I'm setting the scale this time to 2.75. So almost three times as large. So let's see if we run this again, what it will look like. So there we go, now it's a much larger image. Now that we have the image up, the next job I'd like to do is to actually add some text so that people can see the title of our game. So I'm gonna go back up to Super. And just as we created a placeholder for the variable for our image, I'm gonna create a variable that holds some text, okay? so this dot title scene text, this variable is gonna hold some text for us. And we can then go down to create and we can actually add in the text. So let's go down to create. And after we've centered the image, let's use that variable and add some text to the image or to the scene. So this dot title scene text, what I would like to do, whoops, I have a slash, not a dot. There we go. What I would like to do is on this particular scene, I would like to add in some text. And just like we do for images, it would be really helpful if you could tell the computer whereabouts you want the text to show up. So there's a couple of parameters that you can add in. And the first parameter is the X coordinate. So just like last time, we're going to put it in the center of the screen in the X direction. And then in the Y direction, we are going to put it in the center of the screen as well. But I'm going to add in 350 pixels to move it down slightly. Okay, and then the last parameter that we would absolutely need is what the heck is this text gonna say so that we can see it. And in our case, it is going to say Space Aliens, which is the name of our program. Okay, so let's see if I did that correctly. Hopefully it will show up. So let's try that again. taking a little while for some reason. So if you look down at the very bottom, you actually can see very, very small, it does say space aliens, but it's just using the default text. And um, that's pretty small. So what we want to do is we want to change the styling of our text. And we actually can do that by creating a variable and then referencing that variable with their particular parameters inside our text here. So to create the variable, once again, we're gonna go back up to the constructor. And this time for text styling, it's a variable, but it actually holds a bunch of key pair values. So I'm just gonna paste them in so you don't need to watch me type. So create another variable called 
Plato scene text style, and you will notice that it's a bunch of key pair values. So the font we're going to create is 200 points, so it's a lot larger. We're going to color it differently so it doesn't just turn up plain white, and we're going to align it to the center. Okay, so that's what these key pair values actually mean. And then what we can do is we can actually reference this particular font or text styling inside our text that we create. So I'm just going to grab that and we're going to go down to where we created the text. And you can actually add that in as a parameter after the um, text that shows up. So let's rerun that and hopefully our text is showing up a little larger. So it's showing up larger, that's really great, but it's sort of off to the side and we don't want that. So there's yet another parameter that we can use. And I'm going to say dot set origin and I'm going to set the origin to be half. And that would mean instead of it picking it off here, it's going to center it for us. And hopefully that will look better. There we go. So now our text is centered. We have this larger image. It was a small image that we made bigger. And it shows up and we have our text. So now we have a title scene and a splash scene, both of them. Then next time what we're going to do is we're going to add the code to move over to menu after a little while and then we'll add some items to our menu scene.